the ousting of President Robert Mugabe by political and military elites will result in more of the same abuse of Zimbabweans, unless the SADC joins forces with world powers to effect real change, writes Mondly Makanya. President Robert Mugabe has spent the past 17 years worrying and warning about the West's regime change agenda, whose supposed goal was to remove him from power and recolonize Zimbabwe. In the end, it was not the CIA or MI6 that ended his 37-year rule. It was the military man he commanded during the Chimurenga, the guerrilla war of the 1960s and 1970s, and during his years in power. His reign was ended by his own comrades, who helped him butcher opponents and plunder the nation's resources. These were the very people who were supposed to protect him from the regime change agenda. How ironic! How ego deflating for the nonagenarian. What an ignominious end to the reign of a man who could have gone down in history as one of Africa's great revolutionaries. A humiliating ending for someone who, at some point, was mentioned alongside giants such as Tanzania's Julius Nyerere, Zambia's Kenneth Conda, Mozambique's Eduardo Mondlane, and Algeria's Ahmed Ben Bella. Remembered for all the wrong things. Zimbabwe's founding father will not be remembered for his liberation stripes, nor for his creditable, albeit bloody, first decade of governance. He will also not be remembered for his contribution to the liberation of South Africa and Namibia, and the role he played in pioneering the formation of the Southern African Development Community, TSADC. Instead, he will be remembered for all the wrong things, brutality, economic ruination and the destruction of a stable democracy. In his final years in power, Mugabe became the object of hatred among Zimbabweans, save for the most loyal ZANU-PF supporters and beneficiaries of his patronage. So hated is Mugabe that even former Rhodesian Prime Minister Ian Smith once challenged him to a joint stroll down Harare CBD without bodyguards to see who, between the two of them, the people would attack. This week, the people of Zimbabwe celebrated their hated leader's overthrow in characteristically Zimbabwean fashion. They did nothing. They waited five days before taking to the streets to demand what the military had already achieved, the removal of Mugabe. For the rest of the week, Zimbabweans simply went about their normal business of being placid and accepting of whatever the gods give them. Well, what the gods have given them is Mugabe's younger and more evil sibling.